Hi everyone, welcome back to the studio. Well, I've been working here today on picking it and painting all these different florals and stuff. Um, and I'm just kind of cleaning up some paint and that I've been, you know, using and I've just started to pull this over uh, this board here. It was earlier a painting that didn't work. And so I, you know, I usually, what I usually do in a painting that doesn't work is take like a little scrubby and then you scrub it off back a little bit, get some of the colors and stuff going on there. And uh, so I thought, okay, let's uh, turn on the cameras and let's talk you through this. You know, you always see me paint stuff that, uh, um, you know, always works and all that kind of stuff. And every once in a while, not really very often anymore, but every once in a while you get a painting that doesn't work. And uh, this one was, I uh, was trying new things and it just didn't work. So I just scrubbed back through it and it kind of lightens up my feeling. Then I'm just going to attack it again. Okay. I have some flowers out here that uh, I want to use as kind of a reference. So I pull through, I used to use an old scrubby like this and water and I pull through and I've been using a lot of the neutrals uh, in my uh, paintings over there. So I've been working through some neutral colors, some grays and, and uh, you know, I, I love to create different colors of backgrounds because to me those just uh, give you a good place you know in your painting a good idea or place in your painting let's take some whites out here too some of my whites and uh, let's reestablish some of that light color little dirty colors there and so I like I like to play these backgrounds and work them back and forth this is just a big super wide brush and I'll do the wide brush when I want the background to appear a little softer so here I have a you know some different colors come in now let's put in uh, some colors of contrast here as well but first let me just build this light just a few other areas right up here so what I'm looking for a lot of you asking you know, what do you look for how do you get to your creativity well I try these things and that's the thing is you get out and you try things uh, and I, that's why I like to use just the paint at the end of the day on my palette. And I like to use old boards and scrub through them. And, and I try different things. And sometimes they don't work. Sometimes they work. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here now today. So I'm just going to use up some of this paint that's on my palette rather than trying to save it. And I'm going to take a little bit of uh, all these colors that I have out here. I'll list them into the, uh, into the video description for you. Okay, so you'll have that. But uh, let's pull some of this color, some of these color bands. See, I like that kind of stuff. That's the good impressionism of it. And we'll just, let's put it more horizontally right there. Pull that down. See, I like that kind of, that kind of stuff. Let's put another little powerful strike of it right through here. I love designing and painting on the Dutch, which is called St. Andrew's or St. Anthony's Cross here. But they... Uh, yeah, you know, pulling that and, and putting that type of a movement in is really kind of interesting. It gives a lot of look. Sometimes I like the backgrounds more than I do the painting. But now I'm going to take a bit of the green and just kind of poke that through where I think my flowers and stuff are going to be right up in here. And I'll poke some of that through. And what I'm looking for is just kind of a blurry impression of some of the flowers that I want to do. So I started out, when you're painting an impressionist, you, I start out with, you know, you think about, okay, here's background leaves and stuff like that. Well, that's what this becomes. Background leaves and little color marks and stuff like that. That's uh, what this becomes, like an impressionistic of, impression of a flower or something like that. So that's what I, that's what I do. That's what I, I start doing with that. Let me find my good old brush that <laughs> it's I use this for impressionism my old brushes like this and I love it and so we'll come in here and we'll paint some flowers up on top of this here and uh, we'll see how we go I'm gonna while that's wet so I just use water and so it's gonna dry pretty quickly which is what I wanted to do while that's wet I'll come in here and kind of sketch draw base in the kind of flower that I want to put here. Maybe we're going to go with some uh, lighter rose or something like that. We'll drop one in there. Let's leave a little bit of a space and maybe put one falling down right down here. Okay, 
and uh, maybe one other one opened up so I'll do this usually I do it what we call formal bring them in together here and so I'm not going to do that I'm going to leave it a little more informal separating the flowers a bit we'll turn that one this way so this one will go up that one will go that way this one will fold down this way here and I know you can't see that too well but uh, yeah that's what I'm going to do now let's come in and we'll put some cool color into our brush and start where we want to see that center so if I start the center down here down towards the center here this makes it more of an open row so I might paint this one more open here if I put the center a little bit higher that closes down the rows and gives me more room for a, a bowl and stuff onto it so it makes a little bit different one so let's keep this one up like this here and then we'll just so this is just quinacridone some red violet here We'll kind of spin that around a bit. I also want to get some of that nice warm color into the center. Maybe, well, maybe we'll see a little bit of the center there, but mostly a turned rose. Let's get some uh, yellows. Put some of this touch, and, and since everything's so wet, if I touch it too many times, it'll blend in. So I don't like that, and I'm going to have to let some of this dry up. So. But also I'll just stab the yellows in there real casual right now. And uh, let's take some of this red and stuff and push down what could be, even though this is an open rose, it could have a bowl right out there. And that would be kind of pretty. Now let's uh, take some lighter color. And sometimes I'll lean that over, especially on pink roses, that kind of stuff. I'll lean it over slightly to the yellow side here. As you can see, I've done all kinds of things today, <laughs> you know, but I'll lean it over here to the, the yellow side. Let's come out here and let's draw one of the main petals in. Still wet, so I don't push too hard. I don't want to disrupt the color underneath too hard, but I can start drawing some of the underlying petals here. Bring it across, pulling in a bit. If this is going to be my bowl, I'm just going to bring them in right there into the bowl. Maybe a little transparent one or something back there. But you can see everything is so wet, so it tends to get a little bit uh, stripey kind of look with it. And I don't care for that, but I'm going to keep going because it's going to start tacking up. Because I didn't use anything in there to slow it down. So it'll start tacking up and drying here and uh, it'll start working better for me how I like to paint the acrylic here because as I get the acrylic my drawing starts to show up more as I get more and more acrylic here just like that and let's come in push this a little light right here we go and I think I might, you know, that's one of the things I, I might step up in brush size. When I step up in brush size, I'm going to go up here to a half inch. When I step up in brush size, I, it's less work and the flower does not get so stripy and, and um, streaky. So sometimes if you feel that happy, your flower's a little stiff or something like that, step up in brush size so you don't have to work quite so hard. See how much softer that looks and how much easier that goes on. So your brush size really does make a lot of difference. And so here I was kind of liking it, but I was feeling they were, I was fighting it just a bit. So step up in brush size. You know, if we follow that Sargent, you know, John Singer Sargent, those of you that follow a lot of my paintings know that I was a huge fan and am a huge fan of John Singer Sargent. He was... Um, American impression or expatriate American impression uh, painter of the turn of the century and just fantastic and he always said paint with as large a brush as possible and uh, it is so very true so when I step up to those larger brushes sometimes things just get real easy I'm going to put a little yellow a little warmth down in there and we'll build a little more light color that's good right there 
pull some of that down. Now that gets really thick right in there, so I'm going to move over. I'll take a little bit of this Darulite into some of this red. That's a real pretty orange color. So I'm going to move over here to, to this one and work on it for just a minute. Blur out that here, and while that one starts to tack up, here, there we go. Let's put a bit of that orange in there. Find the bowl. You know, I'm always a big advocate of find that bowl. Where's your bowl? The bowl of the rose is what keeps it as a rose. Here, there we go. And uh, we'll soften this out, pull some lights here. A little softer color, not quite as much white. Work the color really soft so that is that way. Let's take just a bit of this nice dirty, not quite white white, and let's maybe uh, draw the idea of some back petals back here. Sometimes I'll just blur those around. And uh, I took out my impression there. I didn't want to do that. Pull some of this out, maybe a little bit lighter right here. We'll pull out. And then, so we'll build a petal, then maybe pick up just a bit of that orange so it tones it down and just let that kind of fade away over there like that. And that works. Let's pull some of this over here. We'll start some of the petals. See how that bigger brush makes the, doesn't, you don't have to work as hard to make the shape of a petal. A couple of strokes. I always, you know, in the, in the, uh, um, <clears throat> those of you who have not watched the Rose Challenges, 30 Days of Roses I did last year. I did 30 Rose Lessons and stuff real fast. I always say that you should try to petal stroke here or when you're creating a petal with three strokes. So it, you should try to paint it with no more than three. And, uh, if you're having to put in quite a bit like I was having to do there, violating my own rules, it was I was working too hard and it doesn't doesn't look as nice there that way. So we'll keep this one a little softer. Let's spin a bit of the violets, maybe a touch of burnt sienna in here, into the center here. Spin that around. I like that. Let's push some of that right out here. So we can even take little corners of that. Just as differences here. Push that color around. See, that's pretty color in there. That opens up and uh, makes a more um, casual rose there. See? Add little touches of light, which is the little side petals here. Isn't that kind of pretty? Little touches, little edges. Little corner, see, just a little corner of paint here. I'll use that just to help spin that around. I do like that yellow, so I'm going to wipe that brush, pick up some of that yellow. Let's reinforce that yellow right in there. And maybe a little touch of the light with that yellow will make the idea of a smaller little petal in there, see? <clears throat> That's kind of fun. Let's go back up here towards our light. Maybe a touch of that yellow. Even that Darya light is really pretty here. Changes it. Builds that rose up right here and in. Right in there. We'll grab maybe a idea of another petal or just blur it off there. That's kind of nice. And then let sometimes on the on the more of the shadow side I'll pull out and might even touch into some of that pinky red there so this whole changes on that side there right like that that makes kind of a pretty one and you can use that little, just a tiny bit of the corner of your brush to draw any more extra little petals let's spin just a bit of that dark right out there like that it'll push back those back petals here Drawing just a bit. Movement. That's what you see. If I don't mix up too much of my colors 
as I stroke like this, I get that movement. But if you're getting too much, then you maybe need to just, you know, increase the size of your brush. It's a balance act, and every one of our hands is a little different. So, you know, you can use the the brush that I recommend, you know, that, that's worked for me, but maybe the stroking of your hand's a little different, so you may have to go up in size or down in size just a bit. That's perfectly natural. Let's put a bit more light right up there. I like that. I want to go slightly pink right up over here. I like that kind of pink coming in there and a bit more light right across there like that just see I don't even have to do super petals I just create that movement and that does the look here here we go that's kind of pretty let's build that one light up a bit more right here there we go a little different yet. A bit lighter right here. And let's blur that just a touch. So I just, I just run my finger through it to blur it, to blur the edges of it and it'll soften it out. Because I want to keep that light. Let's, uh, you know, I'm a big advocate of finding that bowl, restating that bowl. So I'm gonna take a little pink, a little dark light yellow right there. If I restate that bowl, then you really see where that bowl of that rose is, see? Then I'll come back in here and put just another stroke of light right there, right across the front, right there to it. And you gotta get brave. That's a scary one, you just go like that. I do that now so many times, because I realize if I make a mistake, I can just take that bowl color right back in there and do it again. But it does make a pretty one. So. That bowl is so important here, guys. So let's just go find that bowl again, right up over here. Before we get back into this one, we'll loosen up the edges of those strokes a bit there. And uh, and we'll come right in here. So see, sometimes, you know, you reset, your, you reset a painting. It doesn't work. I wipe it back down, my original pressure. I'll usually change. You know, that's the other thing is, if something doesn't work, and uh, hopefully as you get better and better, the, the number of times it doesn't work gets less and less. But some days you just have days and you just can't paint very well. But uh, what I'll do is I'll change. I'll change the, the whole feeling of what it is I'm painting too. Maybe change flowers, change a different way. Don't, don't sit there and struggle painting through something that may not be working that day for you. So don't. Don't worry about it. So I'm going to leave that. I kind of like that, that that's kind of different. You know, maybe I'll spin a little more of a center here, a little bit more out here, but I just might leave this real lost rose there and right up into that one. This one, let's put some yellow into it. Boom, that's quite a bit of yellow into it. Let's put a bit of that yellow there. That's kind of pretty, let's take that, I love that quinacridone and Dari light. Let's push some of that in there. And again, we'll do the same thing on this one. I'll loosen this up a bit here. And um, that works. And then uh, we'll go back now. I may uh, need to get, I just have my big jar of my white. Oh, here's my little tube. Well, this one's just about empty. I don't know if there's anything left in there. So let's see if we can get the last a little bit out of there, a bit more. Might get another painting or two out of that. Let's take some of that white. Push that right in there. And let that just, yeah. And we'll build maybe the, uh, a slight bowl here because this rose is kind of turned. So we'll build a more narrow oval bowl down like that. Okay. So we pull the petals up like this and then let it start to fade out as so it's turned a little bit more. And these can pull in like that. That's kind of pretty. Let's take just a bit of that violet yellow and spin that back right back there like that and just let that kind of soften out there like that. Now, 
that all works pretty good. Let's take and go into this bigger brush helped a lot, but let's put in some ideas of some of the stem lines here. I like to get some of that movement in here and uh, so we can get something, you know, I like the the burnt sienna and the pine green and you just start, you know, sketching it in and let the broken lines, you know, that's the big thing is broken lines like this, you know, really add it and you can blur them off a little bit. Not so easy when it just dried there, Dave, but it's... Uh, the blur, the, the broken lines, just add so much. Look at the little bits of movement. And one lady asked me one of the questions, asked me, do you ever paint with thorns? Yeah, I do add the thorns. And usually I use a little burnt sienna and I'll put a little tiny triangle shape onto the uh, the stems. And when I put the thorns and, and stuff on, you know, I, I, I do add those in there and you will pick up on some of them that I do here. I like that, I like that color coming through. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna play a little bit more impressionism here. I'm gonna take a little extender. It's the first time I've used the extended bit. And I use it not because I want it to stay wet, I use it because I like how it slides over the surface. So I'm picking up kind of that pink that's right there into that flower. And I'm gonna take this like this, take that out and I'm gonna blur it into the flower. So it's some of those colors in and out of the flower so that you see that color coming out of the center of that road or there, that's kind of pretty. And maybe take a bit of light and blur those in and let those, this is the impressionism of it. Let those edges just kind of blur out. That's kind of pretty. That might be nice to have a touch of that yellow right up there. It's coming out of that rose. This one might be really pretty. And again, I'm adding the extender not to keep it wet, just to blur it here so it, so it slides here. Let's just slide some of that yellow, maybe yellow and a little bit of light. I'll put it on pretty heavy like that and then I'll wipe it back down here. So you see that rose just kind of pulling down, fading out or away from that. That's the, the beautiful impressionism of it. Let's take um, some of that green burnt sienna uh, here and maybe even do a little negative painting up over here on this side. Negative means I'm painting, uh, I'm not painting positively the rose, I'm painting the background around the rose there. So that causes part of the rose to pop out there, see? But it's basically the background. And we can shape this up into some petals, some, um, excuse me, some leaves stuff here let me uh, grab this I like how that extender slides I you know I used to paint a lot of wet matter of fact you know years ago I was an oil artist and stuff and I used to love the wet but I like the dry now because I get these kinds of looks that I'll put that on and wipe it down and it looks like you've worked on that leaf quite a bit and you haven't done hardly anything to it let's take some uh, burnt sienna maybe a little water in this We'll put a a leaf here, kind of an oval shape, maybe one that comes out this way here. Not a great shape there, Dave. But then I'll let it sit for a second, and then I'll pull off some of it, leaving just a bit of that memory there. And that makes a nice casual, you know, leaf here. Let's push just an edge of that and let some of that come down here like that this way. Matter of fact, we might just take some of that color and pull down from that. Those yellows and a little bit of that green and burnt sienna there. See, it looks nice. And I can always pull down with my towel, pull across a bit there, and it gives it that nice broken edge there. Now, you know, you can leave that like there. You can pop it up a little bit more. Maybe I want to clean up this back edge. So let's take a look at that first. So a little bit more white into my brush and clean up the back rose petal edge on this side since it's leaning towards the our center, our big guy right there. And I'll push that in there. So that take that light this way here. Here, like 
like that. Maybe a bit of those pinks right in there. That's kind of pretty. That works that and you know and, and it's up to you now you know I can switch over maybe go to a bit of a yellow green let's get a little bit of green and some yellow let's tone it with just a bit of our dirty burnt siennas and stuff and you can look at you know maybe I want to put a bit more green right over here to break all of those reds green was is you know and why I'm saying that is because green is the is the uh complement of that color that I see over there all those reds so this will be it adds more interest and in life over there because you're putting on the complement good color theory like I say in a lot of my things guys you know if you really want to learn how to paint now I've been studying color theory I've been teaching color theory since 1985 and studying color theory basically all my painting life and and I'm still studying it today. I'm still learning more things as colors are constantly and our use of color is changing. But you, to really give you the, the uh, I want to say the confidence, that's the best word for it. The confidence to try things is the color theory because the color theory can get you out of trouble. If you paint yourself into trouble, you can use... The, the laws of color theory to get yourself back out. So here's just a little bit of the toned green, playing some of these greens right in here and starting to fill up a bit of the composition. You know, I do like little rosebuds and I don't do them as much as maybe I should, but let's push a little, maybe a bit more red into that tip of that one here. A little rosebud kind of right out here. You'd paint them more as an oval. And a couple of light strokes here. And before I used to, to shape them up really pretty. Now I just do that. And you don't, and that's, it's hard. It really is guys. It's hard. It, you don't need to do that much because here's the rose and whatever I put down there that's kind of oval, kind of pink and kind of white, it's going to look like a rosebud. Now, you may not in your mind see it as a rosebud as the artist, but a viewer is going to see it there and their eyes going to be up here going, wow, what a beautiful flower. And the rosebud is just a little accent down here and uh, it doesn't take that much to paint it. Let's put a little brighter green right up there in the front of it. Push that in. There we go. But it doesn't take that much, really, to, to paint something like this. And so, you know, now look at this painting. It's going pretty well. We're, what, 28 minutes into this one, you know, and it, not fighting it. Where the one I was before that I wasn't filming, I was fighting it. And, uh, you know, sometimes it happens and you can turn around and the next one, I mean, one doesn't happen and the next one happens. That's part of painting, guys. Don't ever... Don't ever get discouraged by it because we all go through it. We all have it. I'm putting this extender in just to cause this to slide. Need that color. Yeah, yeah. we're putting that in there just to. <laughs> she uh, says it's time to go for a walk. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. You wait for just a little bit, just a minute. We're almost, we're getting there. We'll put some other lively little colors, yellows, yellow greens out here. And if it gets you know, like too much, that's not really too much, but I do like to take off some of it there. I like that extra little bit of that. And uh, yeah, you know, I could even put a rosebud or another or a little, just a something, you know, let's get impressionistic here. That's what we're trying to do, right? Impressionism. So let's just do a something right there. And so it's just gonna take some of that pink and reds there, like that's a center, okay? And then we'll take, not maybe not, so we'll add some of these grays and medium beige to this, maybe a little green, green's great. Get all those in there. See, it's softer. And let's just spin out a little bit of something there. Maybe that's just another little rose. So I'm, I'm Put it in there and maybe a little front and just by taking a an edge or two here to create the idea of a of a petal 
I don't need to create anything there. I'll push that one back. Now, let's create more of an edge right here, which will bring this one a little farther forward here, right in there, okay? And um, of that one, we'll take a spin a little bit of that red here. So wherever I make an edge, like this little edge, that brings it further forward and I'll blur that edge slightly there and that'll send it back just a bit there. But it doesn't need to have that much. Let's put, we could put a touch more light right up here in the front, but very weak. Doesn't need very much. Very, very weak. It's just an idea of the flower. Let's uh, spin this reds around here a bit more and uh, some soft light just fading down there into those yellows leave that there and I'll come back and say do I want to have any more edges to any of these inside petals these are all decisions that you make that basically what more than anything else set what your looks are you know what you do as an artist adding a little extender to get this loosened up and sliding I do like that pine green burnt sienna and some yellows and, and that darulite yellow. It's beautiful colors in this composition here. Got to get that green a bit darker. A bit of violet. Here we go. Maybe a bit of that green right back there in there. So it's pulling your eye up that way. That's pretty good. We can lead your eye by putting a brighter leaf. Matter of fact, maybe we'll do that. We'll push one leaf underneath here, right like that, out the growing direction here. Yeah, that'll be kind of pretty. A little lighter, a little lighter yellow green. And I hit that, uh, you know, I hit the front of that petal on that flower, so I'm going to have to restate that, put that back in. You can touch a little darker. Let's put a little bit of violet into that green. Makes a nice shadow, cool shadow. There. A little bit of dark. Touch that in. I like that dark to really read as a nice dark right around in here by that big rose. I might increase the size of that petal there, but I'm going to pinch wipe my brush. Now, sometimes when I want to create the transparency, I'm there, I want to create the transparency of that petal, I'm going to take this green right into that petal that's right there, blur it off like that. Before I come in and redirect, I'll blur that off. Then Take a little bit of the pink, a little bit of the, the light. We had some yellow in there. So dirty up my brush that way. Put some bit of the light right on the edge and just ever so lightly come through, leaving some of that green out at the edge of that rose. And then that makes that nice transparent petal. So, and transparent petals like this are really pretty in a painting. Let's just add just one or two little extra ones right there pull that out so you get a little blurry memory of it you don't have to be perfect here there we go that's kind of pretty and um i can shape back into that or blur up into that take part of that edge out i kind of like that so um I think I'll put just a touch more here. There we go. This is how you turn a painting that didn't go well into one that went a little bit better. Put a little bit of texture there. And if you feel that, you know, I, I'm uh, kind of lose that edge there just a bit, I'm going to reshape that bowl just one more time there. And so sometimes when I fight it, I'll, I'll put the bowl back on and then stroke it back in again. And it'll 
it'll start coming the way I want it to come, okay? So, and I like this softer look right through here. This is just a little bit harsh for me. So I'm going to go back. Let's go back into some of that red, but some of that dark light yellow. Let's put a little extender in this so that it slides. Let's just restate this again, this yellow right over that area. Then we'll pick up that light with a little pink. And we'll pull back in. This will increase the contrast right there of that particular petal. See? So what it, what is happening here in the last few minutes, I'm building that contrast right up in here where I want that viewer's eye to go first. Right in there like that. That's kind of pretty. Let's bring that down right here. Leave some of that, uh, pull some of that off. It's pretty good. Let's reset that quinacridone and violet, or excuse me, the, the quinacridone violet and some of that dargulide. Reset that again. Real pretty. A little bit of that, of that bowl there. We'll pick up some more white, very heavy little application of it. And pull that down. I like that open like that, and I like that ending like that. I've lost the bowl a little bit there, but it's not so bad. Let's put just a bit of that and a bit of light. This is just increasing the contrast right up here on this, which I want my center of interest flower there. Like that. Put it here, pull in. So this is how you take a, I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave this light pink here. This is how you take a flower, I mean a painting that wasn't working, reset yourself, try some different colors. Sometimes I just take that scrubby, <laughs> I scrub over the board, loosen it all up, smear it around, and work with what I got. And that really works. It really works because it changes your, your whole feeling of the, the painting. And, uh. I did that in one of my seminars at one time. I told everyone to get super wild with their colors. I was going to show them how to fix it. To get super wild with their colors, everyone grab and you know put on stroke a color, stroke a color, blah, you know put this all on super wild, and any of their colors that they want. And so they really got super wild. And then I said, hand the board to the person on your right. <laughs> and so they each had to now take that board and paint paintings onto it. And they came out so wonderful. And everyone always says that was the greatest exercise that they had ever done because it broke all of their their habits and their con misconceptions of, you know, of painting and stuff. And it does work. when you, And so sometimes a little dis, you know, scrubby can do a lot for you. So here I'll just pick out a few little lights darks a little bit of movement in some of there you know moving some of those colors around here that's kind of pretty my and I, I call these the sparks of color so i'll add just little bits of sparks of color around that uh, give the painting a, a touch more life um, i need to drop it down over here so let's get some casual not bad, 38 minutes for this. This is not too bad. We'll get some casual applications of some of this coming out. Just the ideas here, like that. I like a bit of that burnt sienna's in there. And so I'll leave some of that memory, pull some of that out. See, and I like this, especially as I'm coming out. I like to get the broken lines and the and different things coming out and stuff. Call it, uh, you know, get all these little suggestions of movements and stuff out here that I like here, like that. That's not too bad. And again, you can shape up anything, but try not to shape up everything. You know, leave some of these shapes very, uh, I wanna say is, you know, very lost, those lost edges really add a lot to your painting. So you can come back in there negative paint and pop everything out, but that's not always the greatest thing to do, you know. I'm going to uh, 
just reset some of these colors here, or these back leaves. Maybe uh, one more smaller one back up over on this side. Just a whisper of it. And a whisper of a leaf. Sometimes I do the leaves in a little bit more perfect to, to uh, give a different look like that. And then uh, go right into casual. I love the found and lost edges of the painting. So go right into casual there. That's pretty good. So you look at that. That comes back there. That looks that looks pretty good that way. Now I didn't use like any blues or anything like that. That's one thing and you know that you can take a painting like this and you know put a little bit of light blue maybe into the background and then hit it as an accent coming through the rest of your painting. But I don't think it's really necessary on this one. We did this one pretty quick. I know I rambled a little bit, but the whole big point of this whole thing, guys, is, you know, you're going to have paintings that don't work. Reset it. Don't try to, you know, sometimes it's, it's just like this If you when you're having trouble, you know. Uh, reset it. Re, reset the painting. Wipe it all off. And then try to do different flowers. Don't, don't continue to paint that same flower. Move over and try something a little different. And approach the progression of colors and stuff a little bit different. Um and it will turn into a little bit better painting for you, okay? So we all have it, we all have it when it doesn't work. I wish I had the cameras on when that one didn't work so I could show you guys that. Maybe I'll, you know, I'll keep filming until I uh, do some that don't work. They don't, it doesn't happen very often, but it happens to all of us that they don't work. And then I just, this is my, it didn't work tool. Scrub through it, pull out colors, do a little things a little different. And have some fun, okay? And uh, I'll uh, see you guys on the next one. Well, first, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Don't forget to go back to that 30 Days of Roses that I did last year in the start of, or two years ago, the start of COVID. I started you all out with that 30 Days of Roses and the challenge because I show a lot of different techniques in there from acrylic to wet into wet to doing all different kinds of things. And that will help you. And painting through those challenges again, some of you that have been painting now with me for a couple of years, Painting through those challenges again, see where you are, you know, they're, they're a good thing to do and your brush is probably changing and stuff, you know. But then always remember, there are days when it doesn't work, okay. And don't get frustrated by it, just keep powering through it, get yourself a, get yourself a, you can buy a whole package of these <laughs> scrubbies. And I use the little scrubby part of it, work it down, let those colors go over your board and then work into the colors so you can make a nice painting, okay. All right. All right, don't forget to subscribe, click like. Those of you that are in our memberships, I'm gonna put a, I'll put a photo of this one. Nice study, nice close up of it over in the membership so you can print it out and you can uh, use that for inspiration. I'm also gonna, I'm also putting in some of the other ones that I'm painting here and stuff. I'm putting those also into the community page under the membership so you can uh, go look at those as well. And you just, uh, this, this little, yes, come here, come here and say hi there, whoops. You fell off of that. Come here, say hi to everyone. Come here, come here. Come here, say hi. Come here. Come here. Come here, say hi. Come here. Yeah, this is my painting buddy. This, I got two of them. This is Kipper. Yeah, this is Kipper. You see her once in a while in the video, especially walking around in the back back there. But uh, yeah, she and her sister. Her sister's around here somewhere. They're great. They're great fun. And those of you that study portraits and stuff, I do a lot of animal portraits and, and dog portraits and stuff, and I have a few of them on the channel as well. So look to those. Those are, um, you know, they have a couple of free ones on there. They paint a golden retriever and a wolf and stuff like that. So there's a lot of videos, a lot of different things on the channel. Take a look at those. And if there's something else you want to see, just leave us a message down there and, uh, you know, leave a little comment and I'll... I'll uh, paint something up for you, okay? All right, all right, have fun. Don't get discouraged, because sometimes it doesn't work even for it, for everyone, it just doesn't work. We all go through it, okay? But have fun, for sure. Don't forget to change the size of that brush sometimes. That's the key, that is the key, okay? Alrighty, see you guys in the next one.